anybody who dared to oppose his rule or whatever he said let it even be a whisper that you're trying to overthrow him he would literally behead you there are so many people who are beheaded or trying to betray Mobutu <laughs> hi guys welcome back to my channel and for those of you who are new well hello hit the subscribe button at the corner right there right 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 there to get notifications about my newly updated videos of course now today i have something very very interesting today i want to be telling you about a president who embezzled close to 15 billion us dollars from his country Mm -hmm. you had that right so let's just delve into it yeah so today guys i want to be telling you about the one and only for those of you who live in east africa you probably have heard of the person i'm going to tell you about his name is or his name was mobutu sese kukunge bendu wazabanga he was a politician and a military officer in zaire present-day Democratic Republic of Congo from 1965 to 1997. Here, you had that right. 32 years of ruling. Now, Mobutu was the chairman of the African Union, that is from 1967 to 1968. Two years, two years into his presidency, he was already the chairman of the African Union. If that's not ambition, I don't know what that is. Anyway, so the African Union was set up to create, create unity and solidarity between African countries and also to help spur economic development in Africa. That was the whole essence of that whole thing. So, Mobutu, during the Congo crisis, that is the period right after Democratic Republic of Congo got its independence from Belgium. Uh, there was a crisis where he was the chief of staff in the army uh, in the regime of Joseph Kasavubu and supported by Belgium and the United States of America. They happened to overthrow that democratically elected uh, elected government of Patrice Lumumba and I'll do a separate video talking about Patrice Lumumba and his achievements for those of you who don't know anything about Patrice but for those of you who know hello I'll tell you all about it and you try and understand why I'm excited when I talk about Patrice Lumumba so anyway so they overthrew his government in 1960 and after uh, Mobutu formed a government that established okay that orchestrated the, the execution of Patrice Lumumba and he later on went to lead the armed forces of Zaire until he took over power directly through a military coup. So I know you're probably wondering why, but I know you're probably wondering right now what's the beef between Mobutu and Patrice Lumumba, what caused that? Why would he go an extent to execute another African brother? I thought they're supposed to be united woman. This is what happened. So immediately after the Congo crisis, uh, there was a lot of unrest. Death threats were rapid. There's so much going on. It was intense. And the United States by that time sent its peacekeepers in Congo. However, the UN secretary did not refuse to actually deploy. They were there, but they did deploy. They just they were just redundant. They just you know chill. It's like we're just observing to see what happens. And for those of you who don't know, Democratic Republic of Congo is the country in Africa that has the most, most minerals. They outnumber all of us. Some of us just have the smallest percentages, but they have everything, almost everything. Gold, ivory, copper, whatever, name it, they have it. So when all that was going on, and Patrice Numba being a, a, a nationalist that he was, he went ahead and sought the alliance of the Soviet Union to come and intervene in the situation of Congo. Now the Soviet Union responded by sending its uh, military advisors to Congo and other support. Now the intervention of, so of the Soviet Union uh, split the government of Congo and now this caused so much unrest and later on uh, Mobutu and the president by that time Joseph Kasavubu managed to overthrow the whole uh, the whole arrangement of the Soviet Union and that's how they ended up going after Patrice so then what you also need to know when Mobutu became president in order to consolidate his power he formed his own 
his own national political platform which became the only platform that was legit in congo he 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 refused any other opposition party to exist his was the only under righteous one to exist during that time and let it be known that Mobutu later on changed the name from Congo to Zaire and also changed his name from Joseph Mobutu to Mobutu Sesenkoku Gebenu was a banga which means the all-powerful warrior because of his endurance and inflexible ways to win always goes from conquest to conquest leaving fire behind in his work that's the meaning of his name that's why he changed it anyway so Mobutu's government hmm, what can I say about his government for those of you who lived in Congo or who were around the who lived in East Africa, even not East Africa alone, most people heard of Mobutu and his extravagant lifestyle and his very, very, very corrupt government. Now, he had funding of the, of the Belgium government, Belgium, United States of America. There was also China. That's right. Apparently, China has been meddling in also African business since way back. Now, of course, the overwhelming cash flow and, of course, aid from China in terms of monetary towns helped to facilitate the lifestyle of Mobutu Sese Kuku. Gubenu was a banga. Yeah? I just like to say that name. I just feel like I'm just I just want to show up when I say that name. I feel like I'm pronouncing some it's like a sentence in some foreign language I don't even understand. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So yeah I just want to tell you today you guys about the lifestyle of Mobutu. It was just insane. First on the list, let me just tell you about, remember I just told you that he established his political party as the only legitimate political party in Congo. So what happened is that anybody who dared to oppose his rule or whatever he said, let it even be a whisper that you're trying to overthrow him, he would literally behead you. There are so many people who are beheaded or trying to betray Mobutu. People were burnt to the stake for trying to even stage a coup or rebellion. You go against him, beheading, burn you to the stake. That's how merciless Mobutu was. He ruled with terror. He owned everything. He wanted to be the life president of Zaire, like he said. The, I don't know what's with African presidents are wanting to be the life president. He's apparently not the only president I know of. I know the former president of Uganda, Idi Amin Dada, who wanted to be the life president of Uganda. There is now Mobutu wanted to be the life president of Zaire. Our current president himself wants to, I think, be also a life president. And so many other presidents out there, Mugabe, who just died, wanted to be a life president. So many people want to be life presidents in Africa. I don't know. I wonder. I wonder if having so much past sort of puts a spell on you or makes you mentally unstable. I don't know. They must be feeling like some semi gods or something because they can literally get anything they want. If there's nothing you lack, you want money, it's there. You want food, cars, women, whatever, architectural stuff, whatever it is that you want, you can afford. You can get it, no question. As you just get it here, you go, Mr. President. So that's why I understand maybe why these people feel like semi gods. Why would you want to be a life president forever? I mean, it's not a monarchy. You're not a king. Hello. Anyway, moving on. Back to the lifestyle of Mobutu. Now, Mobutu. Now, Mobutu apparently forced everybody to change their names from from the colonial names. If you had a name that is not African, you would be in prison. You had to change your name to an African name. That's why, like I said, he changed his name from Joseph Mobutu to Mobutu Sese Koko because of that. He wanted to do away with anything colonial master related and that i back him up i understand most african leaders by that time changed their names to an all african name that one i totally understand that one i totally understand but of course i don't i don't approve of him imprisoning people but i do understand why he was advocating for people to change their names to an all african name so that you match your roots you have nothing to do with the colonial masters Closed, you know, so that's what happened to him, and that's why he also changed the name from Congo to Zaire to enforce that everything has to be African to that dot. Now, 
another one this is one of my favorites and i have to say it was a very good marketing strategy for those of you who remember the match between muhammad ali and george foreman yeah it happened in the democratic republic of congo back then it was called zaire so he paid apparently five million us dollars to each one of them muhammad and george to fight in his country and the reason for doing this of course was to put congo or zaire on the map but i don't know if people still remember that they fought in congo or they just remember the match but anyway i think it was a very good marketing strategy and i've seen it being replicated over and over again Rwanda just did that with arsenal so i totally understand it was a very good marketing strategy but man five million dollars thanks anyway moving on and by the way there's also some speculation that his children used to fly from Zaire to France to study every single day by chopper. I don't know how true that is, but if it were true, if it is true that they used to fly every day, every week from Zaire to France, I don't know. If it was me, if I was one of the daughters, believe me, I think I'll be feeling like Cleopatra, like, you know, the princesses of the building, don't touch me. You can afford this. I will come like this. <laughs> Honestly, I I don't know. I think power really does make make people go insane for sure. But ash, yeah. Every day, I mean those kids. I don't even think it's true, man. Because you even get exhausted flying from Congo to France to study. What time do you leave? What time do you arrive? Where do you study? And it was so insane. But the luxury that he had, the lifestyle that he had, you and I can't cope up. We can't catch up. It was just too much, y'all. Just too much. And also, and also now this one is this one is actually very hilarious. Mobutu prohibited anybody to wear that leopard print hat. That one, he forbid anybody to put it on except himself. If you have one putting on a leopard printed hat, my dear, you pray to God. To have mercy on you because it probably be your last day to walk as a human being because sure <laughs> because anyway jokes aside you'll be in big trouble you'll be in prison you probably would be killed nobody was allowed to put on a low point print hard extra for mobutu and that was it that was the rule and get this apparently he also had 21 children hello 21 children and during the wedding of one of the daughters yaki he apparently spent obscene amounts of money as an obscene on the wedding day it is estimated that the wedding dress alone cost about seventy thousand dollars the wedding cake sixty five thousand dollars and don't even get me started on the jewels the jewels apparently cost about three million us dollars Let's just pause right there. Three million US dollars of jewels? I mean, this guy had no remorse at all. He didn't even have that human conscience of how can I rip my government of so much money? Everything was. And that's the problem with most African leaders and leaders out there. They think when they're the leader of the country, they have every right to do whatever they want. Hey, man, dude. Anyway, ah, let me keep my frustration to myself. So just like every movie has an end, just like everybody has an end to their life story, he thought he would be the life present, but God had other plans. There was a rebellion that was staged, and this one he couldn't control it because during that time when there was the Rwanda genocide, so many immigrants flew into Zaire and caused so many conflicts between the local settlers in Congo. So there was a lot of instability, and out of that instability rose a rebellion, uh, which was chaired by sorry, rose a rebellion which was led by Kabila. And then he was able to overthrow Mobutu, who then had to who had to flee for his life. He went into exile, and by the time he went into exile, it was estimated that he stole, he ripped his country of close to fifteen billion US dollars. Fifteen billion, yo. He went into exile, but he died in Morocco. Apparently, he had prostate cancer. So prostate cancer claimed his life. He thought he was a god. He thought he would be a life president. But guess what? God has other plans. 
God had other plans and that's it. that's the thing with life you can never predict your tomorrow and if you look at the estate that he had the palace that he has actually uh here are the pictures I managed to get for you some pictures of the palace the state that it's in right now I mean look at it did you see that it's just insane I don't understand people and their greed these things will live forever material things will live forever you cannot be a life president if you are a president please start thinking of the future who's going to succeed you how do you want to leave your country don't only think about yourself that's what pissed me off about Mobutu because I grew up we when I was growing up we had a portrait of Mobutu in our living room because my dad used to do a lot of trade with Congo at that time he used to do a lot of trade in Congo so for some reason I used to always see Mobutu in our living room and he used to always wonder what's with this picture and his his image is so vivid in my head because I grew up looking at that portrait and hearing people praising Mobutu others were so terrified of him like oh my god this guy is so rich this country is so rich so much instability so everything does the good and the negative that i used to hear about mobutu that's why i still remember his image so vividly because of that but anyway the takeaway from this is don't take anything for granted do not take anything for granted y'all so thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of your history class class is adjourned Thank you. And please do subscribe to my channel and share the videos with your friends yeah, to create more awareness about African history. Thank you for watching. Bye. See you next time.